Hey everyone, in this AP Chem series video, we're going to see what Niels Bohr and Erwin Schrödinger had to say about electron arrangement. So remember that when it comes to atoms, we've got protons and neutrons in the nucleus with the electrons surrounding. Typically, we model this with electrons being placed in rings. And while that's a super useful way to do it and still used in many textbooks and websites, it's actually super inaccurate. We do it that way because of this guy, Niels Bohr, who developed this model. And he placed electrons in very distinct rings and he called them orbits because he modeled this after the way that planets orbit the sun. In this video, we're going to focus on what we actually know about electron arrangement today. So while this Bohr model of the atom wasn't totally correct, there were some good things about it, like the fact that electrons do in fact exist in energy levels like the energy level 1 and energy level 2 we can see in this Bohr model of an atom. Bohr also said that increasing energy levels can hold greater amounts of electrons. That turns out to be true. This first energy level in fact can hold two electrons at the most, whereas the second can hold eight. We can even use this Bohr model to explain observable phenomena in real life, such as the emission of unique colors of light released by small atoms like hydrogen. If you've ever driven past a restaurant and bar and noticed a glowing neon sign, you're seeing neon atoms that are giving off their own color of light. And as it turns out, the Bohr model is pretty good at explaining why that happens. But there's some definite downsides too. One of those is the fact that electrons are so ridiculously small that not only are they particles, they're actually particles and waves all at the same time. It's called particle wave duality and it's super weird. And for tiny particles like electrons, it's also impossible to know the exact position and velocity of where they're going to be found and how fast they're going. This is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. The point of both of these is that if electrons aren't really particles, but they're also part wave, and if you can't ever know the exact position or speed of one of these electrons, what does this mean for the Bohr model? Pretty much it means that it's almost impossible to place electrons in these very well-defined rings like Bohr had them. And that's where the quantum mechanical model comes in. Most chemists would agree this is the most accurate model for electron arrangement that we've got today. In this model developed by Erwin Schrödinger, we use quantum mechanics, really complex math, to predict the most probable locations of these weird little electrons. So we can't put electrons in these very well-defined rings, but we can calculate where they are most likely to be found. This model steals the idea of energy levels. That does turn out to be correct. It just gets rid of the idea of well-defined orbits. So let's close the video with three descriptions of what this model might look like. Within each energy level, or sometimes these are called shells, it's not just the energy level anymore. Now there's going to be sub-shells or sub-levels within each energy level. Each of those sub-shells is then composed of regions of space known as orbitals. And that's an important new word for the quantum mechanical model. It's inside of these orbitals where we're going to be finding electrons. What exactly is an orbital? Well, it's simply an area. It's a region of space. And within that area is where the electrons are most likely to be found. These three descriptions make up some of the key ideas for this video. Make sure you've taken a moment to write them down. That also just about wraps it up for this Bohr versus Schrodinger video. Thanks a lot for watching. Here's a brief summary.